demonic instructions that we can learn very easily. It is then broken down into machine language for us so we don't have to program that whole set of ones and zeros. An example would be move 10F and add X. These are mnemonic instructions that we can use to give to this assembler which will then break it down into the appropriate zeros and ones for us. Now again, this has its advantages in that it's very easy to remember and you can program almost everything on that computer just like as in machine language. However, it still has disadvantages in that it's very hard to learn and actually hard to program. Also, you're basically locked into one machine because assembly language really only works on one type of computer. Also, it's very time consuming and very prone to error. So what's happened is we have now moved into higher level languages. Now these are a lot better because they have an English-like syntax. And then we have another program that takes our English-like syntax and breaks it down into assembly language for us. An example of this might be int value equals int value plus one. Well that's a pretty simple arithmetic operation that's very easy to read for us. By using a high level language you're going to be able to learn to use that language a lot easier. It's also going to be a lot easier to read and hopefully you'll have a lot less errors in your program as a result. However, there are some disadvantages to high level languages in that there's more overhead which translates into less performance. Also that it does take time to compile and link this down into something that the machine can read. So there are advantages and disadvantages of using these high level languages. Some examples of high level languages would be things like Visual Basic or Visual Basic for Applications. COBOL was a very popular language used for many, many years on mainframe computers, which are the big computers. Also Fortran was a one used for scientific type applications typically. Pascal was a very popular language and continues its popularity in the form of Delphi, which is another computer programming language that's out there that uses a Pascal-like syntax. C and C++ are very often used high-level languages today. And Java is another high-level language that has an English-like syntax that you can program in. Well, now that we've seen kind of an evolution of how programming got started and how you get into programming, let's talk about some of the different tools that you're going to need on your computer to be able to use a programming language to program a computer. An editor is one of the tools you will need. It's basically where you type in your source code or this set of instructions in this special syntax that you will then submit to the computer for processing. A uh, very basic examples of an editor would be something like Notepad. Now most programmers do not use Notepad as an editor for programming but it is one of the tools that we have. Typically you'll be using the Visual Basic Integrated Development Environment or maybe Visual Studio or maybe another package from another vendor like Power Builder's Editor or Delphi's Editor because they all have these editors built in and that's where you'll type in the source code. A compiler or interpreter is also needed to be able to program a computer. This compiler or interpreter is a program that knows how to break down your source code into assembly language instructions, instructions that it can give to the computer. Examples of a compiler or interpreter would be things like the Visual Basic Integrated Development Environment, Microsoft Visual C++, Microsoft Visual J++, Power Builder, or maybe just a Java virtual machine which usually comes with browsers or things like that. Integrated development environments are simply a combination of editor, help system, compiler, and or interpreter, all kind of wrapped up into one software package. Things like the Visual Basic IDE, Visual Studio, and Delphi are examples of an integrated development environment. So there are a lot of tools that you're going to need to be able to program. However, you will find that most of them are available out there for very little cost from a company like Microsoft or Borland. There are some other tools that we'll need to learn and let's talk about those right now. Another tool that you're going to have to learn is the language itself and the syntax of that language. The syntax of the language usually is found in the documentation 
that comes with the language that you're going to be using. There will be some online help. Basically, you'll hit F1 when you go into the software package, and it will give you a help on the language itself. There's also books that you can purchase out there. A lot of people write about software languages, and they're out there at the bookstore. Also, there's typically a books online, which basically are books that you can read on the computer. And then, of course, there's the internet itself, where there's a wide variety of help and information available on the syntax of a language. In addition to all these tools, you're also going to need, obviously, a computer. And on that computer, there will be an operating system. An operating system basically controls the operation of the computer. Now, different examples of operating systems you might use would be things like Windows, uh, Windows NT, Windows 95, maybe a Unix environment, or maybe you're even on a mainframe or a mini computer. But these will be also other tools that you'll need to program your computer. So if we were to talk about the steps that you take to compile a program, you would use an editor. And that editor is where you will write your source code. You might then save that source code in a file on disk. This source code then gets submitted to a compiler or an interpreter. The compiler takes this source code, breaks it down into a machine-readable format to create an executable program. The executable program runs underneath the operating system. It interacts with the operating system to tell the operating system to display information on the screen, write information to the hard disk, or whatever is required of this computer program. So we have a couple different routes we could take. We have the high-level language, which is broken down by a compiler, which goes into machine language. Or you may have assembly language, broken down by an assembler into machine language. This then runs on the computer, and that's what your computer program is. Now let's learn about some of the different programming terms that you'll hear, and that we're going to cover in the rest of this video. Some of the terms you'll hear while programming are terms like operators. An operator can be a math operator like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, or a comparison operator that you'll use to test if one value is less than another, or is one value greater than another. Variables, which is a placeholder in memory for a value. Um, this has a name that you'll use in your computer program that is associated with that memory location. Statement, 